Hey there fellow coffee lovers, it's Lofty from Coffee with Lofty. Today we are going to unbox some new Hario V60 equipment that I've purchased and we are going to brew some very high-end geisha beans roasted by Jibby Little Roasters and produced by 90 Plus. Um, right after this, stay tuned. So for the unboxing, here's what I've received from Amazon. Um, I've bought the Hario V60 drip decanter, um, some filter papers here, and also the Buono um, kettle from Hario. Uh, so I've gone with the non-electric version so that I can use it on an induction cooktop or on my gas stove top as well. So definitely excited to ha get, have a go at this and definitely excited to brew th these beans right here, which are quite high end. Um, they actually work out to be at $40 a cup, but we'll uh, go into that quite shortly as I'll tell you a little bit about the producer and the beans themselves. Now, firstly, looking at the papers here, um, there's a video out by James Hoffman and he talks about V60 papers and these ones are actually made in Japan and for some reason he did a test with all the different uh, Hario V60 papers because there are a couple of varieties that are manufactured in Japan and some are actually manufactured in the Netherlands and apparently the ones manufactured in Japan seem to brew a little bit better as maybe it's something to do with the porous how, how porous the paper is or or the way it brews and water flows through it or something like that but it might be worth watching his video and see what you think um, let me know in the comments if you've had experience with different papers from Hario and what you think um, so unboxing it they just come in a packet like this um, with a packet of 60 papers. Um, they don't have any tabs, um, but they actually have a, a, a quite a strong, I don't know if it's just these ones or the way they've been sitting in the warehouse or something, but they actually have quite a strong scent of um, cinnamon, like kind of a candy cinnamon type flavor. So I hope that doesn't sit in the paper and affect the taste of the coffee. I'll definitely rinse the paper out before yeah, before brewing the coffee to hopefully get rid of any, you know, scents or taste. Now we move on to the Buono, Hario Buono pour over drip kettle. Um, so this is pretty straightforward. It's just a 1.2 litre uh, kettle. Um, so it's just, yeah, it, it's just, it's not electric at all. So it can work on um, both an induction cooktop or, um, or on, you know, a stove top as well so like a gas stove so I'm looking forward to using this um, so it gives me a bit of a variety of how I use it it's pretty simple straightforward it's just stainless steel um, and then you can see here that yeah it just opens up easy there's no thermometer or anything um, it's quite feels quite nice in the hand and will be easy to pour um, but yeah it seems pretty simple and straightforward that one so Looking forward to using it. So now we're gonna have a look at the V60 drip decanter. Um, this is actually the same one as what James Hoffman has used in some of his videos. It's not actually why I bought it, actually, I just bought it because I thought it was the best looking one and just happened to fluke that it turned out that's what he uses as one of his daily drivers. Um, so opening this up here, we have a plastic insert, which is actually the V60 where you do all the brewing uh, in there. So. Um, that just sits inside the glass decanter, which is here as well. Whoa. Sorry, so we've got the glass decanter that sits here. Um, so that is what we would use for the coffee to brew into and also for serving. We can see the V60 dripper sits there. It also comes with a silicon, um, a silicon grip to wrap around it so you can handle it while it's hot. Um, which is a pretty good inclusion so you don't burn yourself and it also comes with some filters uh, some filters here as well so um, I'm gonna get everything cleaned up 
and we can have a look at the beans and start brewing. So looking at the beans here, I really love the packaging. It's like a really high-end packaging with the foil finishes on there. Uh, so they are Panama Geisha beans um, where they're farmed in, Pan in Panama, uh, produced by 90 plus. And they are of a Carmo uh, flavor profile, which has tasting notes of pineapple, hops, and caramel. So they were roasted on um, the 28th of February, 21. So they're probably just at the right time to, to drink and brew right now. Uh, and they are roasted by Jibby Little Roasting Company based in Sydney. So Jibby Little is, is quite uh, famous in the coffee industry. She's well known for her latte art and also the Jibby Little Jugs or the Jibby Jugs, um, which are you know sort of those rainbow colored latte art jugs. Um, so I'm going to go into and have a look at, at the, at not only Jibby Little's website, but we'll also show you 90 Plus's website, because I think generally in coffee as a consumer, there's not a lot of info on the producer themselves. And, you know, while 90 Plus might be sort of a high-end producer, um, a lot of the time the story surrounded, you know, surrounding producers is about fair trade and, and paint a picture of struggle. But I think coffee producers in, you know, in Africa or South America or, you know, in the Middle East or anywhere really, um, sometimes, you know, I think they bring a lot more to the beans than a story of struggle. So, you know, not a lot of, well, not all roasters give you any insight into the producers, but when they do, I definitely want to share that um, with you so that we can understand where the beans have come from at the very start, you know, before they get into the cup and we consume them. So, um, let's have a look at the, not only the roaster, but also uh, the producer. Okay, so first we look into at the roaster, Jibby Little, who is famous for her latte art and uh, Jibby Little jugs. Based in Sydney, Jibby also has a Jibby Little roasting where she carefully roasts premium coffees to create unforgettable experiences in the cup. Looking at the Karma Geisha variety, Little Jibby is selling 35 gram packets for $80 AUD, which is actually a very fair price considering 90 plus sell them at $100 USD roasted or unroasted based on purchasing one kilo. Now looking at 90 plus. 90 plus are a coffee producer founded by Joseph Brodsky in partnership with the Aletta Family Investment Fund. With the goal to challenge and innovate the value chain in the coffee industry by matching coffee grown in the best conditions in the world with technology to develop natural processes to provide consistent, unique flavor profiles. Camo, the Camo taste profile was first manifested in 2017 in the famous 90 plus batch 227, which broke both producer pricing world records at $5,001.50 per kilo US at public international auction and was used to win the 2017 World Brewers Cup Championship in Budapest. As we scroll down, we can see here that 90 plus are selling one kilo at 1,000 US dollars for, you can get that either roasted or unroasted. So they will um, roast that on order for you if you wish to have that or um, if you, you're into home roasting yourself, you can buy the green beans and, and have a go at that yourself and try and roast some different flavor profiles. Um, so the technical information, that the farm it comes from is the 90 plus geisha estate. So geisha beans, um, they're, the, the variety is originally from geisha, which is a place in Ethiopia, but um, they're, they're quite well known to be grown in Panama for the... Um, for the conditions of growing coffee there to get the best results. So these are grown in uh, the 90 plus Geisha Estates, which is based on the Baru volcano in Canada. Uh, sorry, in um, Panama, which is quite close to Costa Rica. The terroir to uh, grow those beans, uh, rich volcanic soil, only 400 to five years old, and an elevation of 1500 to 1700 meters above sea level. Uh, terroir is actually a French term that can't be translated to a single word in English. This is why the French term is also used in English. It encompasses everything that brings out the result in the production. The term is often used in coffee and wine production. Terroir encompasses everything from climate, soil, elevation, farming practices, and more. It is quite complex. 
Geisha beans have a huge demand, which can be attributed to marketing. And whilst there are many high quality geisha beans produced, many say it is overpriced in comparison to the quality due to marketing. But it is normal that if you want a good thing, you have to pay for it. All right, guys. So I'm no expert at filming, so I'm still sort of testing the waters. So please ignore all the kitchen stuff at the top. You can see in my sink and stuff. But uh, to start off with, what we're going to do is we're going to pre-wet the filter which in turn will um, help heat up the, the decanter as well. So this won't take a sec. Cool. And while I give that a moment to heat, um, what I've got here is my um, V60 drip kettle, which I've preheated the water in there to boiling 100 degrees. Because I thought by the time I get to doing this, it'll drop, have dropped a little bit. Um, so I've got the Carmo Geisha beans in here, which I've, um, yeah, what I've done is I've grounded them in my niche grinder to um, about a setting 38, which is sort of a coarse grind, which is sort of right for, yeah, for a pour over method. And then I've also got a cup here with some hot water preheating and then also my scales here. So what I'll do first, I'm just going to take this off for a second and empty this so we can start brewing sorry guys won't be a moment pop this in here and what we're going to do is pop Try to carefully put the coffee in the center of the cone there. Balance it out a bit and make a little bit of a well. All right, I'm going to tear the scales. Start the timer. And first of all, we're going to try and bloom the coffee. So we're just going to pour in about 40 grams to start with. Well, I've gone a bit more. I've gone to 50. And we're just going to swirl that around to get the slurry of coffee in there. And give that about 30 seconds to bloom. We're aiming for a ratio of 1 to 15. So I've got about 17 grams of coffee in there. So we're going to be aiming for about 250 grams all up. So now we're going to go for the next pour. We're just going to pour that around to slightly agitate the coffee. And we're going for about 160 grams here for the first look start of the pour. So I'll stop it about there for a bit. This is just my method. Um, it's loosely based on the James Hoffman ultimate method, but um, sometimes it's a little bit hard to follow, but I think just by doing this, it's, it's um, pretty reasonable. And then we're going to go for the rest of the pour now and go to that 250 level for the drawdown. It's good to sort of keep coffee in the in the filter at the top so that um, you're keeping the heat the heat about right. So now we're about there. And then for the last drawdown, we're gonna swirl the coffee around. And this will help create a flat bed. And then hopefully that's going to draw down and we're aiming for about a total brew time of about two minutes and 30 seconds. <clears throat> if we go a little bit longer, it's not too bad. I think for me, I've noticed with taste, the sweet spot is, you know, below three minutes is, is the ultimate um, sort of guide. And what you definitely want at the end is a flat bed of coffee, which we do have. Um, I will show you. So... That's pretty much finished brewing. So I can stop the timer there. 
and we can see here that it's a flat bed at the end, which is sort of what we're looking for. So um, I'm going to cup that up. Alrighty, guys. So now we're ready to taste it. Um, it's quite quite a good clarity to it, which is great. Um, I'm trying to smell it. Definitely more of the hops come through in the smell. It's like a yeah, it's like a um, kind of a planty type smell, um, which is similar to hops. If you brew beer, you'll sort of know what I'm talking about. Um, not so much the pineapple though in the scent once it's been brewed, but I will try it. Um, so I'm just going to pour it here. We'll watch here. Yeah, definitely some, you can smell the hops there. So um, probably with my grind on, on um, sit, you know, having a look at the, having a look at the grounds at the end of my brew, it was probably still a little bit fine. So I still have another round of um, brewing to go with that geisha, which what I will do is I'll probably do it a little bit more coarser, but depending on the taste, of course. So, so the tasting notes we're looking for is, again, pineapple, hops, and um, caramel. So let's have a taste. Mm. Definitely in the, in the taste, um, the caramel comes through probably the most at the start. And I'm not sure if you're too familiar with coffee tasting, but you have to slurp. So apparently that helps, helps the flavors come through. Mm. It's quite smooth, um, so I'm not sure if you had V60 brew uh, style coffee, but it's got more of um, tea elements to it. It's not bitter. Um, there's a lot of sweetness sort of in, in fruit acidic type sweetness flavors. It's quite clear um, and probably has more of a tea property than what you're used to finding in, say, an espresso or something like that. Um, But yeah, I think definitely there is slight fruity notes there through acidities. Like it's got a kind of a trop, kind of a tropical acidic type flavor that you might get out of, yeah, maybe a pineapple or, or a passion fruit or something like that. But I can't say it's definitely a pineapple flavor that stands out 100%. But my, my palate, I'm still learning to taste coffee. It's not, definitely not perfect. So, um, but definitely caramel comes through. So the the caramel flavor 100% comes through, through sweetness and just like a slightly creamy sort of texture. Yeah, definitely. But I definitely recommend trying it. Um, it's quite a beautiful coffee. Uh, I would do it again. It's probably not something I would drink every day at $40 a cup Australian. Um, that's quite a lot to me. Um, but it was definitely worth a try, and it did come with my Jibby Jugs when I bought it, which you might have seen in my previous video. Video, And it's been a great experience. So I do thank Jibby Little for sending that out with the Jibby Jugs. Um, it was a great experience to try such a, a high-end sort of coffee, and I would highly recommend it. So I hope you guys have liked this video. Please like and subscribe so I can grow my channel. Um, it's all about... Not so much about equipment, but it's all, you know, it's going to have a little bit of equipment in it. We're going to talk a little bit about coffee. I want to delve into coffee beans themselves, where they're from, the roasting story, the, the production story. Um, and then also I want to look into a little bit of coffee culture in Melbourne. So I live in Melbourne, Australia, where we have quite a, what I think is a great and, and large coffee scene. Um, so... I hope to sort of visit some roaster, roasteries and also some cafes and share those with you guys. Um, so yeah, please like, subscribe, and let me know if you've tried any geisha or any really high-end beans um, in the comments, such as like a Jamaica Blue or, or anything that even let me know what your favorite coffee is. I'd love to hear about it. So please, yeah, please comment, like, and subscribe, and we will see you next time. Cheers, guys.